previous uh, talk uh, that it, this actually is implemented in Perl 6 and you can use it now, code junctions. Anyway, uh, what is Padre? Oh, what does this work? Yeah. Well, Padre tans, stands for Perl Application Development and Refactoring Environment. Of course, this is a really bombastic name, uh, but in fact, this is just a text editor with a slightly oversized ego. In order to prove that, uh, I have a slide here that shows the, how the application looks like. You, you can see that it basically uh, looks like a simple text editor, a notepad, or um, something like this. Anyone here is uh, use, uh, actually a Perl programmer, by the way? Who is Perl programmer? Just hands up. Okay, good. About half of the people. Good. So this is how actually the application looked. Um, it doesn't always work. Um, how the application looked uh, about a year and a half ago when we started the project. This was basically the first release. Since then, we added a couple of more features in order to turn it into a, a, a real IDE. So these are the features that uh, usually you are expecting from an IDE, or at least people writing Java or C++ or language, uh, programming in uh, similar languages are expecting. And uh, these IDEs can actually provide this for both Perl 5 and Perl 6. The IDE also has about 56 plugins at the various stages of development for various additional uh, features. And this is uh, how it looks like, or actually how it looked like a couple of months ago. This is 0, uh, 047. That was released, I think, about two, about two months ago. As you can see, this is a German version of the, of the IDE. We have it, uh, I think, in like 15 or 16 languages. And you can see that there is uh, some more complexity in there, but the basic features are the s uh, same. So when you open it the first time, it still looks like just a notepad and uh, allows people to write uh, code without thinking about other things. So when I'm talking about a, a project or thinking about a project, I would like to see where it can fit in uh, the user space or market in some, play in some terms. So I ran a poll uh, in October 2009, a couple of months ago, to find out what editors or IDEs people are using for Perl development, writing Perl code. So the answers were uh, really interesting. In, within just three days, I got more than 3,000 answers. And uh, most of the people were actually saying that they are using either VI or Emacs. Uh, apparently, they were using Linux and Unix. And then percentage of answers was 47. So you can see that most of the, uh, uh, quite a lot of people are using these two editors. So the problem is, of course, that those are only for the geeks. And uh, Padre is not for geeks, really. So Padre is for the normal people. So it remains, f it leaves f for us about 53% of the population, which is okay, sort of OK. Uh, of course, this uh, uh, little poll also proved us something else. We know now that the normal geek ratio in the Perl community is about 1.12. By the way, I am a Vim user and a Padre user, which probably points me, puts me in the slash, but I don't know really. Anyway, in the poll we saw that there are a couple of other less geeky editors for Linux and, uh, and Unix, and they got about 10% of the vote. On Microsoft Windows, there are the so-called programming editors. Uh, some of them you can see here. Some of them are commercial, some of them are shareware, some of them are open source, actually. They got 21% of the vote. On Macintosh, you have these two that got 7% of the vote. Uh, as I understand, they are the best thing on Earth, just after Bel Belgian chocolate. But I don't really know, but I never tried to use them, so some people might know. And there were two IDs that got votes. Uh, Commodore ID, which you might know, is uh, developed by Active State, and it's a commercial ID. It costs sub something like 300 uh, dollars and Eclipse, which is open source and it has an, uh, which is for basically mainly for Java, but it has a plugin called Epic, which is for Perl development. They got about 12% of the answers, which really means that really a low percentage of the Perl users are actually using something uh, like an IDE, and that's something we would like to change with Padre. So there are about there were about three percent of people who uh, answered Padre, the Perl IDE, which is um, of course a bit skewed because uh, I probably all of the Padre, the Padre users have answered. Um, um, but I was happy because we got more than 100 uh, answers just for Padre. Actually, we got 101. Um, so there is some uh, Padre user base already. So uh, what is Padre? Padre is an IDE for Perl, and it's an IDE written in Perl. 
So you might ask, why would I write an IDE in Perl, and why would I write an IDE for Perl? Well, the four question is, um, there are a couple of uh, reasons to write an IDE for Perl. First of all, there are lots of beginners who are starting to learn Perl, and they need something to help them more than uh, VI or Emacs would help them, uh, or a notepad or something like this. They need more help in the language. Uh, they might need a debugger, they might need language help, and so on, and an IDE can do that uh, very well. Um, there are also an, a huge other segment, uh, people using Perl relatively rarely. There are tons of people who are using Perl two, three hours a week. So they might have been using it for three, four, five years, but still they are not experts. They are not Perl programmers or uh, application developers, and they still need some more hand-holding than someone who's writing Perl uh, as, um, uh, to, for, uh, for his main um, uh, income. And then even them, even those people for whom Perl is the primary programming language, they might need an IDE, because uh, earlier there were, there were no real refactoring tools in uh, Perl, and Padre is changing it. it. Padre already has a couple of refactoring tools. And when you're writing a large application, you might like to see your whole code base at the same time, you would like to see the classes, and so on. So IDEs can fit to that uh, place as well. But why would I write it in, uh, in Perl? Well, we know Perl, and our users know Perl, and that means actually that every user, and that's uh, actually a rare case in the op even in the open source world, every user is a potential developer. And in fact, we see that about half of our user base have already contributed to the project, uh, which probably will go down as the user base grows, but it's still a nice uh, percentage. So when I started the project, and basically that's what uh, I think I wanted to talk about, uh, I faced a couple of problems. The first of all, that most of the Perl programmers, as you could so see, uh, are using uh, either Linux, Unix, or Macintosh, and they're not really aware of the problems of Windows users, for example, that they don't have a usable shell uh, to get uh, information from there, and so on. Uh, but even them, even, but uh, they are also usually not that aware of people, uh, of problems people facing uh, that are coming from Java world or the C++ world, and so on. Also, uh, the hardcore Perl developers are using ORVI or Emacs, as you could see from the poll. So it means that it will be hard for, for me to get people from that community to contribute to the project. Because VI Emacs people, uh, they won't change their uh, editor any, uh, anyway, and they don't even understand why anyone would need anything else than, them, than VI or Emacs, respectively. Uh, but it's okay. Anyway, when I ask people about this, about IDEs, and um, uh, talk about this, then I get all kinds of answers, such as uh, Perl does not need an IDE, or a language is bad if it needs an IDE to write it in. Um, well, I was wondering a bit about this, because I was thinking, if I write an IDE, does it turn the language into be bad? Or, uh, but I decided that uh, I don't have such a power. Anyway, uh, as a last minute, uh, as last, uh, last thing to say, they usually say, ah, yes, but there is already Eclipse and Epic, and they use that. Well, we have more problems, actually, that I'm not a good programmer. So that is a, a slight problem for writing an IDE. And actually, an IDE, as I thought, it's going to be a huge project. Actually, as it turned out, it's way bigger than I thought. Anyway, how do you solve this problem that you don't know how to program, really, and um, you need to read a huge application? You, need, you generate community support. So let other people write it. So the first thing, uh, one of the first things I did, I created a plugin system that will allow people to play with the project without actually getting involved directly in the project, which let, let uh, people play around with the, with the tool and then get involved. A little bit of history. I started the project in May, June 2008. Uh, the first public release was about uh, July, in 27 July. And then the first public appearance about the project was in uh, YAPSI Europe, which was in uh, August 2008, which is the European Grassroots Conference of uh, Perl. That was a year and a half ago. Today, we are after release of uh, version 056. Uh, we had more than 10,000 commits in uh, subversion. 
and more than 50 developers contributed to the project. As you can see from this graph uh, taken from Olo, uh, we, have about, we have about 15 developers every month contributing to the project. So it seems that the project took off uh, quite nicely and we have a contributor base. So what did, what did happen in YAPS Europe in 2018? It was in Copenhagen. I gave there a lightning talk, and lightning talks in the Pearl conferences are five minutes long, so you don't have to, you don't take so, talk so much. Uh, the main point what I, I made is I gave a list of all the features I would like to have in Padre, and then I told the people, it will, it, everything will be there if you write it. And the, just two or three hours after, my fir after this talk, I could add the first contributor to the project. So it was, uh, for me, a successful talk. Then this is the place for the promotion. Actually, YAPS Europe 2010 uh, is going to take place in Pisa in Italy in August. And if you'd like to hear a bit more about it, there is a Pearl stand in the AW building. And we are happy to t tell you about that more. Anyway, so how uh, were we doing um, project management? In many open source projects, uh, the open management, uh, project management is uh, quite strict. We took a liberal approach, or I took a liberal approach in the beginning, and then other people took it with me, uh, giving out commit bit basically to everyone who asks. Uh, the Pax project, which was the first implementation of Perl 6, uh, took the same uh, approach, and it uh, took off really nicely. Same with Padre. Um, but actually, it will, at, at one point, we'll have to stop this, because when the project gets big, it's uh, getting a bit crowded there. Anyway, the um, other thing that we were doing is adding features. Uh, even if they weren't full, even if they were, we knew that they were full of bugs, with the hope that other people, people will come in and fix those bugs and then improve the project. And that's actually how it happened. And most of the features that are in Padre now have been rewritten about two or three times already, which is really good. It means that uh, we can gain a lot more commit bits. Commit. Uh, other thing that I've been doing is relying on existing code. So for Perl, it's good because we have CPAN, the comprehensive Perl archive network, that has about 20,000 packages for all sorts of things to be done. Uh, and they have automatic tests. So a large part of this is a quite high quality and good code. So we were using it. So how much Perl was using uh, is CPAN? See, Padre actually depends on, depends on 83 uh, packages within CPAN, and there are, there are five more packages that we are using just for testing. But these packages, these CPAN packages, uh, libraries, uh, they also depend on other things. So in, end, in the end, we have about 200 dependencies uh, just for Padre. And if you take into account all the plugins of Padre, we easily reach the 500 uh, dependencies, which is really good. And code reuse is really good, but it actually has several faces. Yes, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what is the good? The good is that we don't have to write that code. The bad is that we don't control that code. And why is the mouse there? And the ugly is that we have to install that code. And we uh, gave a talk about the distributions and stuff like this, and this is really fitting there. Because we know that uh, in order to gain market share, most, much, the mu much more important to be easy to install than to have high quality. It's an anonymous proverb. And you say, anyway, we have to think about distribution. How are we going to distribute our code or project? So the first choice is obviously for us, uh, per project, uh, per developers and per project, into, is to distribute the code on CPAN uh, in source code format. That's the standard way to distribute packages. It's also a good way to distribute applications, because then all the Perl programmers who are already familiar with CPAN know exactly how to install it. And we don't have to have any other explanation. We already have the tool chain in place. We already have the testing system in place. So it's quite a good way to distribute source code. Then, of course, in order to make it more available, we need to be able to package into distributions. So really early in the project, I think after I released the first public version, I started to talk to the distribu distributions. There are two mailing lists, the, Linux, uh, the Fedora and the Debian ma mailing list for distributions. And I asked them to package Padre. The, this is the list where, where it's already packaged. And lastly, we have um, 
uh, we created downloadable uh, standalone binaries for the major operating systems we have for Microsoft Windows, MSI and Zip. For Linux, we have a tarball that you just untar and run it. And uh, there are other things. And the last thing I have to say that you talk about it on them. Sorry, that was a bit no, fast. Thank you very much.